On April 29, 1975, as the victorious North Vietnamese Army swept toward final victory in Saigon, and as the last Americans were evacuated by helicopter from the U.S. Embassy compound, I stood on the stage in the auditorium of the old Executive Office building and read to the White House Press Corps this statement from President Ford. And I'm just going to read you the, the main portion here. This action closes a chapter in the American experience. I ask all Americans to close ranks, to avoid recrimination about the past, to look ahead to the many goals we share, and to work together on the great tasks that are remain to be accomplished. That was President Ford's statement. My voice was unnaturally high and quivering. I fought to control my emotions. Ten years earlier, in the summer of 1965, as a young White House correspondent for NBC News, I covered President Lyndon B. Johnson's announcement that he was ordering the first large contingent of American combat soldiers to Vietnam to try to prevent the North Vietnamese and the Viet Cong from conquering the country. Vietnam dominated my life for nearly a decade. I came of age as a journalist there. I gained confidence in myself as a reporter and as a man. I, I witnessed horrifying things there. I saw friends and colleagues and innocent children and adults killed there. I met a woman who I later married. I won praise and journalistic awards for my coverage. I almost bled to death while reporting on the war in Vietnam when a fragment from an exploding hand grenade pierced my lung. So it was no wonder that my voice quivered, no wonder that I was so overcome with emotion when it fell to me as Ford's White House press secretary to announce the end of the Vietnam War. That war had shaped who I was personally and professionally, what I thought of myself, what others thought of me.